You always want to be really careful when you first go into a branch because you're entering an area that only has one exit. Um, it makes it much more dangerous. So just be, be very careful. You can use Auto Explorer, but just be careful of where it's taking you. Like a lot of times when it throws me in one direction really far, I'll kind of pull back manually and explore more closer to the stairs. Just because like, if it takes me all the way around here and then I run into a Hydra, I have to come all the way back here. And then by the time I get back to the entrance, maybe something wanders over here and then I'm flanked. So, you know, I use Auto Explorer because it's so convenient. But at the same time, I like to use manual to, uh, to just, you know, keep things somewhat safe. Okay, we did gain an AC. Uh, I think I'm going to just... go a little further on maces. So here comes a pack of yaks. We're going to pull these guys back. Poison is very good in Lair, generally speaking. Okay, these guys you also want to be careful about. Try to get into an area where the least amount of them can attack you at once. Um, they hit, they hit pretty hard and they're fast, but they're they're not like super like you know uh, beefy as far as like defenses are concerned. These guys are very strong. Like you can see, he just whacked me for for uh, two hits, took me down to half health. I'm still worried about Degen, or I, if I found Degen, or I had a little bit more Int, I might just I just, might just pump Int next time because um, I do want to I do want to quaff ID these stacks. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna Trog's hand here, and I'm gonna Berserk because he's getting me. Got getting me down a little too low for comfort. Yeah, let's use I'm I'm at half health. Let's keep moving back. I hits for 20. I'm not... Let's regen. Okay. Yeah, I like using... Uh, something. Wand Blast. Some type of consumable when... Uh, when the situation is like that. Definitely don't want to try to save stuff and and get into like really bad trouble because what ends up happening is when you try to save um, a, a worse consumable you get into a situation where you need to use a better consumable okay I'm kind of getting hit I don't have uh... I don't like a harpy I think I'm going to try paralyzing this guy. It's 54%. There we go. All right. I'm just going to bring my mace to uh, Mindalay. If you look at your weapon, it'll tell you um, when it reaches its minimum attack delay, which is the fastest it can possibly swing. Generally speaking, you're not going to bring it beyond that unless you have some crazy apt. Uh, it, there's diminishing returns once once you hit the Mindalay. So a quick way to just set your skill target to Mindalay is to just do I, A, and then hit S, and it'll automatically set set it to uh, your Mindalay target. OK, 
Okay, let's be careful here. Komodo dragons are definitely still non-trivial. Let's head down. Mm, I'm going to let this wyvern catch up and pull him up, and then I'm not going to come back down here. I'm going to exclude this. It's a dangerous staircase. This this first floor of lair, like when you first get here, is uh, it can be like an uptick in challenge, you know? So if you've been like squashing everything in dungeon, uh, you don't want to get too confident and you know, just tab into death in lair. Okay, now I see the Komodo Dragon and Cane Toad coming. We're going to switch stairs again. There's an entrance to Snake. So, lair contains uh, what are colloquially known as the S branches. Snake, Swamp, Shoals, um, and Spider. These are places you're going to go to after you clear uh, Lair, Dungeon, and Orc. You do not want to go into them right away. They're, they're really dangerous if you, if you go into them when you first find them. And even like the, the Welcome Vaults can be very dangerous. So be careful of, of things that are surrounding these, these uh, S-branches. Quiver darts. Dart this guy up. Okay, here we have an electric eel. The the wand of flame is kind of just the hard counter to uh, to electric eel. Like, anything that's in water, Wand of Flame is pretty good against. Uh, assuming it's not, like, resistant to fire. But even then, like, um, it breaks line of sight a lot of the time because it creates steam. But yeah, hitting it hitting it with this, it just gives it a steam bath and it'll generally kill it. Uh, lava Snakes, they're usually not too bad. But, uh, I, I mean, I have double resist fire, so I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm good against them. But if there's a bunch of them, definitely, uh, you know, show some caution. I haven't found any uh, cloak gloves or hat, right? Or amulet. Also wouldn't mind the shield. Okay, a dex ring. I don't think it's going to help me much um, as far as, like, it gives me one EV. I guess I'll wear that over the second ring of fire for the time being. Okay, we got Nurgal. Nurgal basically uh, summons a bunch of stuff. Also has Bolt of Draining, which hits for a grip. So you can uh, you can die to Turnagal if you're not careful, especially if like starts summoning and you're just kind of standing in the middle of it. But yeah, we're gonna break line of sight here. I don't think I'm gonna move. I think I'm gonna wait. And uh, if she summons a bunch of stuff, I'm gonna berserk her down. Yeah, that qualifies. All right, let's move back. All right, we're on Mindalay on the weapon. My dex actually isn't bad, and I'm wearing this ringmail of poison resist. I think I'm going to grab some dodging. It's very cheap. I'm at 12. Basically dodging keys off of dex. And... Um... It'll... 
it'll uh, bring up your EV, and it's more likely to come up the less uh, the less heavier armor. Which we just happen to be wearing, like ring mail, which is not. I like wearing plate. I just haven't found any, and the heaviest thing I found is chain. But I think I just value the resist poison over, like the the, the three AC. At this point. Especially in Lair, where there's so many things that poison. Uh, where can we go? Southeast. Alright, let's break line of sight here. Ooh, a cloak. Nice. Okay, this is uh, Shoal's fault, which is very good, by the way. Uh, we got Shoals and Snake. Uh, that's what I would have picked, honestly. <laughs> like, Shoals is just like a like a, a cache of um, stuff for a melee dude. Like, it's going to give you a bunch of javelins, boomerangs, nets. If you're in it, you can get a good pole arm there if you're in the, you know, if you're looking for that. Uh, let's put on flight here so we don't keep struggling in water. Okay, here's some yaks. Pull them back. These, like, little corner areas are really, really important to identify to, so that I'm fighting one yak at a time instead of, like, four. ID. We got cancel. Okay, we found curing. There's Sanja. Sanja is someone you really want to respect. Uh, you can see my screen just flashed. I have a screen flash set up for distortion. If When you first start playing, you end up going to the Abyss a lot. Like, it's just, you know, and you're like, uh, why is this here? Why am I in this place that's so out of depth? There's some enemies that can straight up banish you. It's usually a will check. And there's enemies that will have distortion. And one of the distortion effects when they hit you is that you go to the abyss. Which is often a death sentence uh, early, especially if you're a new player. So, the thing about Sandra is that um, she has, like, trash tier willpower. So... You really want to you want to avoid ever being adjacent to Sandra when she has Disto. Just just don't do it. Just assume that every hit will banish you. Uh, and we do have Paralyze. We have Poly. These are like the what we call hex wands, wands that do will checks on enemies, and they're the best wands against um, against Sandra, especially Poly. So let's see what our Poly choices are. She can turn into a hog, a water moccasin, or an acid dragon, none of which have thumbs to hold wands, and it's 63%, so we're going to do that. And we are now safe from being banished, although we're dying to this uh, acid dragon. I've got two potions to cancel. I'm going to quaff one to cancel the corrosion, and I'm going to berserk to kill this guy. It might be overkill, but I don't like that situation of being at negative 8 corrosion and not having yet done any damage to uh, to an acid dragon. Just better off uh, overshooting. Alright, we'll grab these Kirar. Yeah, you gotta be careful. If, if, um, if you poly 
Sandra into something like a like a human or whatever, something that has like uh, hands, it can pick up the the disto weapon, and it, it usually will immediately. These dream sheep are very dangerous as well. Um, the more of them that's on screen, the more likely they are to put you to sleep. You see two of them haven't really seen us yet. I'm going to continue to back up just so there aren't as many. Pull them back. Uh, let's Trog's hand. Jeez. Let's back into this corner. Ooh, that's not good. I'm going to heal wounds here. And I don't like this situation. I think I'm going to Trog's Hand and Berserk. Oh, there's five of them now? Now I don't want to Berserk. I think I'm going to read Fear. Yeah. Yeah, it's too dangerous. All right, let's move slowly. God damn, there's so many. Uh, probably going to read teleport here. It's just just too dangerous of a situation to to try to move away from. Like to like walk away from, I mean. Okay. Let's uh, walk to the stairs. Hey, what's up, Velocirambus? Welcome. So yeah, th that's like a situation where you really just have to recognize that it's better to start... When you get into dangerous situations, you kind of have to go into escape mode. Like, how do I get out of here rather than how do I kill everything? All right, let's see if we can pick these guys off a little bit at a time. That, that is a lot of dream sheep. Uh... So, yeah, the, the most... Some of the most dangerous stuff in this game is the stuff that takes away your options. So anything that puts you to sleep is very bad. Seven-headed Hydra. This is like... These things are like the enemy boss of Lair. Especially if you're using an axe. Like, if you have no... If, if you're Even if you're using an axe, definitely always, like, uh, carry around at least a, you know, a flail or... Even a dagger. Like, even if you have, like, an electric dagger untrained um if you're berserk with an electric dagger you can kill one of these you just you want to have a weapon that doesn't chop their heads off because <clears throat> if you attack these things with an axe or a sword they, they keep growing heads and um you die very quickly all right let's pull back Okay, we gained some EV. We actually gained more EV than I needed to, but that's okay. We'll go a little further on fighting. Trog will, like, at, at high piety, uh, Trog will start gifting you weapons. You really want to avoid the trap of, like, trying to hoard piety to get gifts. The gifts are sometimes not that good, but if you don't use your, if you don't use Berserk and, and uh, Trog's Hand when you're supposed to, you're either going to die uh, and not get to the point where you're getting gifts, or you're going to end up using, like, your other consumables and just be in worse shape. 
you know, if you're if you're like hoarding piety and you end up using like blink scrolls you didn't have to, uh, or like a, like might potions or haste potions, like that's usually much worse. So yeah, definitely use what you have, especially when you have resources that are uh, replenishable like that, like like god abilities. Am I familiar with any runs that didn't use a single item? What do you mean? Like no consumables or just... Oh, consumables? I'm sure they must exist. <clears throat> I mean, the craziest run I've ever heard of is uh, Stair Dancer, who I don't think he plays Crawl anymore, but he did a Minotaur run where he didn't use uh, he didn't use any attacks. He killed everything with horns. There's a, a thread on Reddit about it if you search for it. Um, he did, like, a whole write-up on, like, you know, how he did it. But, yeah, he, he literally killed everything with horns. It wasn't like he, like, used, like, you know, did an attack and used, like, spells and throwing and stuff. No, he literally killed everything with horns. He had, like, a, a caveat that, like, you know... Uh, he might, like, accidentally, like, run into, like, an invisible enemy or something and hit it, but, uh, but yeah, for the most part, at no point did he attack or do any, like, aggressive action except retaliate with horns. So, pretty, pretty strong ability, horns. Okay. It's a cataplebus. These things are These things are they hit for they hit for a good amount of damage and they're very strong if you don't um if you move wrong. They really punish you for not moving out of there. They shoot clouds of dust that petrify and if you don't move out right away you uh you will get petrified. I'm going to go up, find a different staircase. Ooh, fancy cloak right there. It's exciting. Venom is very good against blink frogs. While they're like blinking around, they'll uh, continue to take damage. Okay. That's actually good. Um, gives me a resist cold, which I don't have. And the incidental int... Even though I'm not casting, I just, now I don't have to worry. I can, like, quaff ID and not have to worry about degen. All right, so we're going to put that on. Yeah, at this point, I'm going to quaff ID. Uh, well, let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to hit backslash, uh, backslash, and see what potions I don't have ID'd. Okay. The only bad one I can really hit is Berserk. I don't want to be Berserk here, so I'm not going to do it here. Alright, so you see how it shot this cloud at me? If I stay in here, I likely get petrified. I can move southwest or southeast. Southwest is good because it pulls the Komodo dragon into it, and it will petrify him. Yeah, so just be careful about tabbing too fast and, like, hanging out in a cloud. It's a depressing way to die. 
All right, let's uh, quaff ID these potion stacks. Okay, we found Enlightenment. We found Berserk. Actually not useless on a Berserker. I, I don't know if I've ever actually done it because I tend to Berserk less the further into the game I go, but it does allow you to Berserk while silenced. So it does have a use. Okay, and Brilliance, which I don't care about. There's an eight-headed Hydra. You definitely want to pay attention to the heads because the tile kind of looks the same, but an eight-headed Hydra is much more dangerous than a four-headed Hydra. Let me see. Can I kill this without berserking? Looks like it. So I want to be careful, but I also I don't want to needlessly use piety if I don't have to. Okay, elephants. These things are... Their whole, like, gimmick or whatever is that they can trample you. Um, which means, like, when they attack, they have a chance to, like, push you back. So be mindful of that. Don't expect to fight a pack of elephants on the stairs and just, you know, stair dance up uh, when you want to. Okay. Very hydra -y. Oh, I'm training Evo? I don't even remember turning that on. I think I'm actually going to train a couple levels of throwing. It's very cheap and uh, and useful. Okay, boulder beetles. These guys hit for a ton when they roll at you. Um, and But they are susceptible to poison, so load them up on poison if you can. If you find these guys early, like on layer one sometimes, uh, they, they can be, like, uh, really something to think about. Like, something you're probably going to use, like, a, uh, a scroll of poison on. Okay, we found a plus nine war axe. That is a good weapon. That is better than any of the weapons we have. It's a tier below, as far as base weapons are concerned, a morning star. Like, if you look at a morning star, 13 base damage. If you look at a war axe... 11 base damage, but plus 9 is a ton. Flaming chops Hydra heads, and it comes with a bunch of crap on it. Like, triple resist negative is whatever. Uh, resist corrosion is sometimes useful. Willpower is, is nice. But, uh, yeah, we'll be using this. Especially since, like, I don't even have to train really any differently for it, uh... Like, I don't necessarily have to... It, Mindalay is 16. It wouldn't cost that much. I'm, I'll probably do it at some point, but for now, I'll just keep going on throwing. But that, that's a nice find. Was that a god? Let me control F god. That wasn't a god weapon, right? No. Trog gave us a heavy battle axe. Okay. Sky sharks. These are another uh, enemy you really want to be careful with. Just on their head... They hit for 20 and 2 with the tail. Like, they're they're not nothing. But as they bite you, they get stronger. Once it bites you once, it gets might. And then if it bites you again, it goes berserk. And then you can be in a world of trouble. So I'm going to hit this guy with Kirar. Dart him up a little bit. Yeah, you don't want to underestimate them. They will, they will deal a lot of damage. This is the end vault. Um... You can get random end vaults on, on layer 5. This is one of them. And I'm probably going to skip this for now. Like, these dire elephants are very strong. They hit for 40. Uh, and they have a lot of life and a lot of AC. So, for now I'm just going to close this up and I'm going to exclude it. We'll explore the rest of layer 5. Uh, probably do like orc and dungeon and then we'll come back lair, lair 5 loot is nothing to, to write home about so yeah probably just gonna save like orc has a ton of money I'll probably get a ton of money from orc and then buy the uh, gold dragon scales uh, 
me see what scrolls I don't have recognized just to see what this might be. Requirement, blinking. Okay, those are the two big ones. All right, let's head to dungeon. Control G, D for dungeon. And haven't found orc yet, so let's head down. Scroll of silence, okay. Um, yeah, I'll bring the axe to Mindalay. Why not? I think I'm gonna wait. Do I have a cheaper Ambrosia somewhere? No, okay. Yeah, I think I'm gonna buy Ambrosia just to. Oh, and there's Degen too. I'm gonna buy uh, Degen. Basically, it's useless, but it's 12 gold. It's basically a 12 gold ID scroll. So we're gonna buy that, and I'm gonna buy Ambrosia. Ambrosia probably not that useful on this character. It confuses you and like regens your health. Sometimes useful, but mostly I'm buying it just to ID it. At this point, I'm just going to drop some of this stuff. Usually after Lair, when you come back to Dungeon, you're, you're kind of in a good spot. Like, it's kind of a... As far as, like, your power level compared to other things. Two-headed Ogre. I'm just going to poison this guy up, I think. These guys barb you. When you have this barb status, if you try to move, it will uh, it will deal damage to you, and it also makes the barb status last longer, or like you know, not diminish anyway. Okay, well, I got this short sword. It's not something I'm going to attack with, but it has resist a lek on it. So if I happen to need resist a lek while moving away from something or throwing or or whatever, uh, I'll I'll wield that. Orb of Light. This I'm going to use. This is... Um, Orb of Light is good if you haven't found a shield yet, especially. It uh, essentially gives you C and Viz on anything that's in the aura, and it increases your accuracy. It's a, it's a significant item. War Gargoyle is, uh, is non-trivial. These things do a lot of damage. So, just be careful of them. Yeah, see that? I killed it kind of quick. It was an Invisible Stalker, though. They, uh, they are invis, and now that I have the Orb of Light, I can see them. Yeah, there, there he is. These things can be really annoying if you, you can bump into them, these pretty early. You'll just start getting hit. And uh, they move batty, so if you do happen to, to face one of these without C invis, there's a couple things you can do. They don't open doors, so you can lock them in doors. Uh, you can just kind of avoid them, like go up the stairs and come back different stairs. But if you do have to attack, the best way is to, to move backwards and, and swing forwards. interesting vault does orb of light work on spells you mean as far as the accuracy I, I think so let's see if it says yeah yeah increases accuracy against all within it other than the wearer so I, I presume that means spells as well Okay, here's a pack of gnolls. We're going to back up from these guys. 
do be careful when you're when you're fighting gnolls or when you're fighting a pack of stuff and they often have pole arms. Be careful because even in a corridor, you can take more damage than you're used to. Stone spear? You mean like a oh iron shot? I mean, yeah, it, it'll benefit from it. Any any spell that can miss would benefit from it, but I would still. I probably, I, I very rarely use it on those characters because I would just rather have stealth and uh, and a buckler. But even without a buckler, I'd still rather have the stealth on a, on a mage, I think. There's just um, a lot of things you want to avoid. But I would use it early. I'd probably end up using it more with stone arrow, like early in the game. Be careful with these guys. They come in packs. They're fast. And they're vampy. Okay, yeah, let's rush this guy before he starts summoning. Magical power. Good for a mage. Not good for me. Let's turn off some of the stuff. Int. Yeah. Oh, nice. Demon Trident of Alec. That's a nice weapon. I think I'm going to stick with my War Axe for now, but uh, that, that would be good if I didn't find anything else. The other nice thing is he has uh, he has Silver Jabs. And this is another guy who's ripe for, for Hex Wands. He has very bad will. So yeah, I'm just going to poly him into a non urig type character. Silver's nice. Silver, there's some things that are vulnerable to Silver, but just it, they just do more damage than regular Jabs on top of that. I don't know. It says anyone except the wearer. I mean, it feels like in the spirit of things that they wouldn't be able to attack your summons better, but I don't know. I'd probably use it, though. Uh, I would always use it early. It's very strong early, for sure. Whether I would use it in the late game, I very rarely use an orb of light late in the game. It's usually just better things to be doing. I mean, maybe, like, like yeah, like... Uh, like New Jazzarino said, maybe if it was like a Rand art that had some other properties tacked on. Okay, still no Orc. Orc can appear as late as D12, so it looks like we got a D12 Orc. And, yeah, it looks like we found it. Okay. Looks like Trog gifted us a Raw Dog Broad Axe. You never know, though. At some point, it's I theoretically could brand it, but I don't see a reason to do that at this point. I don't have enchant weapon scrolls. Even if I got, like, a good brand, I think I'd just rather use the plus nine war axe for now. Um, how's my armor doing? I'm still using this ring mail, huh? Oh, plate mail of fire resistance. Let's go grab that. I wish, I mean, I have all the fire resistance in the world, but this is just like, I'm out of lair. I don't care about uh, resist poison as much. And as you can see, it's an 8 AC difference. That's very big. So I'm going to go from 12 AC, 14 EV to 2010. That's much better. Yeah, let's drop some of this stuff. Yeah, now I'm just going to grab AC. I'm at 20. I'll probably bring that up to at least 22 before I shut it off. There's a shield. Now I'm starting to get to the point where this this orb of light's going to go pretty soon. I'm going to grab my AC first and then I'm going to I'm going to look into shields. Um I don't really value C invis super highly. I mean, I'll take it over nothing, but I'd rather just be blocking. Uh, we got a ton of stuff here. I think I'm going to just keep backing up and, yeah, pull this stuff more toward the staircase. 
Okay, this guy blinked toward us. Let's kill him. And I'm just going to be careful how I move now because I don't want to fly into that pack of things in, like, a bad way. Okay, Hydra's much less dangerous now with a with a axe of flaming. Um, yeah, I think I'll take the resist cold over the one AC. Let's drop that. Okay, I gained an AC. I'm gonna gain one more before I think about shields. Just using poison darts just to like call things out. It's a fire crab. These things are super dangerous if you don't have resist fire. They just surround stuff in in flame clouds. This Afrit, also dangerous. You can see I have resist fire, and I'm still... I got double resist fire, and it still whacked me for a good amount, so... Ooh, Nexo quick. No thanks. Okay, nice little pile of loot here, though. Like, a, a plate armor of fire resistance, that's something where... If I don't have anything else, like, if I find that and I've already enchanted up my auxiliaries, I'll start enchanting that up. Like, I, you can end the game with a plate armor of fire resist uh, just fine. But, yeah, I'm going to keep... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold out. I got a, a gold dragon armor on deck. It is very important, but I just... Um, I have two rings of fire resist right now, like, but no, I agree, it is, it's a, it's a nice brand, like, going into the end game, it's a nice one to have, so, you just want to avoid, like, like, if you find fire resistance at this point in the game, or so early, like, and you have, like, say I had, like, eight enchant armor scrolls waiting to get, like, gold dragon armor, uh, so that you can, you know, you're basically just having eight less AC for most of the game and then pumping it into this gold dragon armor like for the last like you know five percent of the game all right let's see if we missed anything and let's head to orc orc sorcerers one of the most dangerous things in orc because they paralyze you you can see it has a 16 percent chance um, but, you know, I can Trog's Hand. And after Trog's Hand, you can see it's a 0% chance, which is much less than, than previous. Orc is a place where you can easily become overconfident because a lot of things are so squishy. But you really want to be careful uh, about getting getting surrounded because it's very creature dense. And these guys in particular, orc warlords or orc knights, make everyone else stronger. Like this battle cry ability that they have, um, giving them strength will make non-trivial um, monsters will make trivial monsters non-trivial. And especially if it's, like, two Orc Warlords or two Orc Knights, they become, like, an order of magnitude stronger because they pump each other up. See, he immediately mighted them both. So I'm taking hits. I'm taking, like, they're getting free hits on me while I move back. I don't care. I'm, I'm still going to do it. I'm not going to just hang out uh, in one spot. So he has a pole arm. He's not going to move toward me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move... Uh, I'm going to move south one uh, to pull him adjacent and then up and then go up to pull him up. Okay. I don't have digging. One thing you can do in orc when you get an orc like this where you can't see the whole floor because every floor has three stairs up and down. Um, well, 
if it's the first floor of a branch, obviously it only has one stair up, but uh, I, otherwise it has three stairs down. One thing you can do is like revelation, see where all the like all the other stuff is uh, on the map, and then dig through. But I don't have digging, so I will have to be careful about going down into this orc knight. Oh, there's a distant snort. I just noticed there's a uh, a gauntlet on this level. That's that's good. Let's hit this guy with Kirar. Let's pull him up. Ah, I missed it. I missed the gauntlet. That's a shame. Would have liked to have gotten to that, but it's very hard in Orc sometimes to get to these things because not only can the the areas be like uh, disconnected, but it's just there's a lot of monsters. So if you try rushing toward like a, a timed vault, um, you, you can end up just killing yourself. You know, the the gauntlet will kill you without you even entering it. Essentially. So these guys, like, I, I can use uh, Trog's hand to just make this zero. You can also just break line of sight with them. A lot of these, a lot of monsters that have abilities like Paralyze or whatever, they need line of sight, or uh, not line of sight, line of fire to hit you. So if you're behind other dudes, they won't be able to paralyze you. Something to keep in mind. I am going to Trog's hand anyway, just because of the situation. But it's 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 really something to keep in mind when things... When things have uh, abilities, especially Paralyze, Sleep, Banish, if you don't have the willpower to mitigate it, either with an ability, with a Ring of Willpower, you can Quaff Enlightenment for a pip. <clears throat> if you can't get it to zero, you want to break Line of Fire with them. You really want to assume that on every turn they're going to do the worst possible thing to you. If you if you play around the worst possible action they can take, uh, you you will be on the road to to not dying. Yeah, you can see like stuff just keeps coming. So we're just gonna back up. Like, a single Orc Priest at this point is pretty trivial, but, like, six of them all smiting you at once is definitely definitely a thing. All right, let's go up. Let's wait a while until his summons go away. These guys are also dangerous. Um, they smite, but they also summon demons. And I think, like, Sun Demon is probably one of the most dangerous things you can face, especially if you don't have resist fire. They deal, like, 40 damage. Let's back it up. Yeah, you can see this is... I control F God. This is the gifts I've gotten so far. This is why hoarding piety isn't all it's cracked up to be. Like, Trog will give you a lot of crap sometimes. Okay, let's back it up. You see these, this guy, this tile right here, Nexo Quick. They have Malmutate. They can give you stuff that's very annoying. You really want to not, uh, not be in their line of fire. When you highlight a, a summon, you see if you look at the blue, the blue shirt orc. When you highlight uh, a summon, it'll highlight the thing that summoned it. And that's the guy you want to kill if you want to get rid of the summons. Yeah, definitely be very liberal with Trog's hand. You pretty much want to use it in any any non-trivial situation. If you're not doing something else, you want to be using that. 
Um, especially when you're, like, not at full life. Yeah, so this is the end vault. These end vaults can be, can be different. Um, you know, sometimes it's just a bunch of... It, it's almost always going to have, like, high-powered, high-tier orcs, but there's one that's all ranged. There's one that's, like, hellish. I mean, you can get different ones. Okay, this shop seems to have nothing for us. There's always going to be four shops at the end of Orc. And uh, this is a good one. Two acquirement scrolls. I usually check out all the shops before I buy anything. Just, just to see what's going on. Okay, looks like only one of the shops has good stuff. I pretty much always buy acquirement. One of two things is going to happen. You're either going to get a great item or you're going to get gold. And the gold will... The gold will, like, you know, if I'm spending 700 on this, uh, on this scroll, it's very likely that, uh, it's very likely that it, like, replaces itself or, or just, you know, even if I low roll the gold, I'm, I basically, I gambled, but it cost me way less than 700. It cost me, like, a couple hundred at, at, at absolute worst. So let's buy one of these axe scrolls and see what we got. Okay, it's not a good one. I'm probably going to take the gold, honestly. Like, Manual of Evo is fine. The the, the gloves and the battle axe are, are untakeable. And um, if there was nothing to buy, there's an argument for Manual of Evo, but I have, I have gold dragon armor, and this buys it, so I'm going to take that. And here, yeah, manual of dodging versus gold. Pretty much, yeah. Once again, I'm taking the gold. Actually, one second. Did I pick up this gold yet? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm taking the gold so I can buy that gold dragon armor. Do they need help? Eh, I mean, it's better to have it than not have it, but um, yeah, I'm not taking it over gold dragon armor, especially since once I'm wearing gold dragon armor, I won't have a ton of dodging, more than likely. All right, so we'll explore the rest of Orc and then go pick up that, that GDS. Yeah, I was never getting to this gauntlet in time. There's just no way. Fighters without gold dragon armor feel gimped. I mean, it's very common. It's it's not you're not often going to find gold dragon armor. More often than not, you end up in like in plate armor. I'm going to throw all my enchant armor scrolls into this. Um, I'm going to go buy the other enchant armor scroll. Okay, so now we're we're obviously great on, uh, on resists. Lucky enough to find that gold dragon armor. Yeah, it's not it's not common to find gold dragon armor this this early. If you don't find gold dragon armor at this point, I would definitely recommend using your enchant armor scrolls on on the. I would have used it on the plate armor of fire resist. Minnow can wear alchemist. I, I don't know that I will. Um, it's not it's not that good, frankly. Like when I already have all the resists, it's basically just a negative two hat of resist elect. So. I don't know. I'll see. I might end up wearing it just, just for the resist elect for a while. But if I find like a plus a plus two hat of, of anything, uh, I'll probably wear that instead. Just because like, it's a four AC difference. So the hat is good. Like, don't get me wrong. Like some people say it's trash. 
it's not trash. I mean, it, it's worth a bunch of rings. But when you already have the resists, it's really not that good. Especially if you can wear a helmet. Because a lot of times it's like you're sacrificing 6 AC. All right, let's check out the rest of Orc. It just looks very fancy. Like... You see all those things, and you're like, oh, wow, it's it's insane. It, it's good, but it's not insane for, for every character. Ooh, we got a pile of stuff here. Yeah, I, I might just not come back up here for a while. I don't like that Orc Knight, Orc Warlord combo is not something I want to fight. And I'm basically, there's unlikely to even be anything up here except uh, except some more gold. So, I probably grab this just because it's like I think I like resist the lack over negative two AC. But uh I'd be surprised if I'm wearing this by the end of the game. Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna set it to five. When I get to five, I'll switch to the kite and start training kite. All right, let's head down to uh, D13. Okay, this looks like a, a fun little mix of enemies here. All right, so, yeah, I'm going to immediately just pull these guys up. Um, actually, what, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift-X to give this like big map view go to this other staircase and hit the uh, left bracket to just see where it goes up to and then I'm going to exclude so I don't accidentally come down this other staircase I'm going to pull these guys up and also exclude the one I came down so now the third staircase um, will be one that isn't you know uh, hopefully isn't in that pile of things. So let's uh, shift X and greater than sign will toggle through the downstairs. Yeah, and we'll go to the one that we haven't been down yet. Okay, it looks like it's... This isn't so great, actually. <clears throat> All the upstairs are basically in the same room and there's a dispersal trap right there. Um, I'm going to hit Control X. I want to see what kind of weapon that thing's holding. Control X will show all the features that are in your line of sight. And we can see that he's got a heavy trident, so it's not like a, I don't know, a distortion weapon or something like that. Um, I'm going to move southeast. So, like, you, generally you want to stay on the stairs, but I don't want them to hit this dispersal trap and send me flying somewhere. Uh, dispersal trap is basically something that blinks everybody. So I'm going to move southeast just to f um, make these guys not go straight to the dispersal trap, because that's what would happen if I stood there. Yeah, I'm going to move down one more just to try to pull that red devil. Although these other guys, I think I might, I'm going to, I might end up getting dispersed here. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, I tried, but I guess that was, I should probably just come back down the stairs I came down. We're not like in dire straits, but uh, 
We could have done this a little safer, probably. I think I'm just going to read teleport. I don't know. I could move. I could just walk south. Um... Yeah, maybe walking south is reasonable. Let's pull these guys up. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, I tried to exclude to be safer, but the uh, all the stairs are kind of bad. There's a boulder beetle. These guys are susceptible to poison. Although usually post post lair and orc with a decent melee guy, you should be okay. Okay. I'm going to keep going on shields. I really just set this marker. Um, to remind me to... Oops. Let's back it up. To remind me to switch from the buckler to the kite shield. The uh, shields will, without the proper training, they'll make you swing a little slower. So usually I'll use a buckler for a little bit until I get a couple levels and then just go to the kite. Because the defense is usually at that point worth the, you know, the, the penalty. Like, my attack delay is 0.8 right now. Um, it's normally 0.7. So it's it's shaving off a little bit. But uh, the defense from the shield is very nice. You're just going to negate damage from, from things that are blockable. Okay. This guy, whenever you see uh, a Cabal Demonologist, like they can, they can summon some pretty nasty stuff. I like to keep them out of line of sight as long as I can. So I'm going to move west here just to, to break line of sight. He won't summon things when he can't see me. That way I can just kind of kill things. I wait. And now he's adjacent to me. And it's just a lot less turns that he has, you know time to, to uh to summon it's kind of like that for anything anything that summons or smites or does something to you at range you know makes makes the situation worse while you can't get your hands on them you want to to break line of sight with them usually if you can't attack them at range um these guys i'm like somewhat cast spawn are, are weak, but there's like a very small chance they banish you <laughs> when they're in a... They have a Chaos attack, and Chaos always has a chance of banishing. It's a very small chance, but it, it will happen. It's it's greater than zero. Uh, I'm going to use Boomerangs. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, the less hit, hits they get on you, the better, because getting sent to the Abyss is, is not wonderful. Okay, there's a Nexo Quick. That's another thing that is bad if it has line of fire on you. Um, I'm going to use, if you X and then V, you can see they're, they're vulnerable to silver. Pretty much anything chaotic is going to be vulnerable to silver. Um, I'm going to hit Shift Q to quiver and pick silver javelins. Um, and javelins have the advantage of piercing through everything. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to hit F and then target it and just let silver javelins fly. Okay, cool. 
I, every time I fight something with Malmutate, I hit Shift A just to see if I if I got any mutations. But we're okay. We also, I think, have yeah, we have like the uh, the Alchemist hat, which gives us resistance mutations. But there's only like I think there's only two items in the game that offer resist mutation. It's extremely rare property. Ooh, a ring of slang. This is a very good item. We're going to put this on. Wow, three pips of fire? It's crazy. All right, yeah, we can put on slang for fire. I can drop one of these fire rings. Um, yeah, this is not normal to have this many resists this early. <laughs> really. I feel like I need to play another, another character that's more poverty. There's an Arcanist. Let's uh, XV this guy just to see what he's about. Okay, he's got some range spells. It's the Occultist is the one that banishes. Okay, let's read ID. Found blinking, nice. Okay. Oh, okay, I see. So we have a broad axe and we have brand weapon, but we don't have any enchant scrolls, so we're going to stick with the plus nine war axe for now. I think that's the, uh, oops, let's go back to, uh, what was it? I think that's the assessment I made probably last, last time is that I'd rather have a plus nine war axe than a, uh, plus zero broad axe of something random. These guys, they, they give you the barbs, um, the barbs trait, which basically when you move, when you move it, I think it increases the duration of the barbs and it also does damage to you, but I am going to take some damage just to get close to them so I can attack them. But yeah, you want to be careful because the first time you, um, you move, it'll prompt you. Are you sure you want to move? And then once you do that, it'll keep letting you move and that can keep damaging you. So be aware of that. Uh, I see a soul eater here. These guys, they like they drain life you, and they don't need line of fire. They just need line of sight. So I'm just gonna back up, uh, break line of sight, and let them approach. I have a war axe. Be careful if you fight a hydra without a flaming edged weapon. It will make the heads uh, multiply. So if I didn't have with a berserker, it's not a big deal. If I if I didn't have this war axe, I would switch to the Morning Star, and use that. And if it was like, say this happened in Lair, like I wasn't as strong as I am now, I would be, I would just berserk. You know, if if you really are worried, you could like summon a friend or or use stuff at range. There's something invisible. Okay, I have two a, two stack of scrolls. I hit uh, backslash backslash to see what items I don't have recognized. Fog, ammo, torment, or enchant weapon. Okay, I'm just gonna hold off on this. Um, enchant weapon is the last like non tactical scroll I have left, and I don't think there's anything I want to enchant. <clears throat> yeah, I got I got really lucky on items. I wish I didn't, just so uh, for the purposes of of learning. But um, I'm gonna do more of these. The only thing I haven't really found is an end game weapon thus far. So yeah, when you get to to D14, D15, this is where even D13, the the enemies ramp up in difficulty. Okay, we got enchant armor. We're going to immediately cash that in. But it's also a good lesson in, like, when you get good gear, um, you still want to make good choices. And, you know, there's kind of a bell curve of good gear you can get. And when you're a new player, you tend to die when you get the best gear because you just start thinking you're invincible. And when you get, like, 
good gear, you, you know, when you get bad gear, you don't win. When you get great gear, you make mistakes. And then when you get pretty good gear, it's like you, you're in a good spot, but you also don't take it for granted. Um, probably keep going on shield. Yeah, I'm not used to having such a good shield out. Okay, we found enchant weapon. If I get more enchant scrolls, like if I get a couple more. Okay, we got an amulet. Nice. Um, if I get more enchant scrolls, I'll I'll brand the broad axe. You want to be careful about vampires if if you find these guys early. Um. They do have Confuse. I happen to have, like, pretty good will, just normally. But if you find these guys early, you want to use Trog's Hand for the, uh, for the willpower. Um, that's, that's, like, the one, I think, maybe people focus on the berserking aspect of it. But Trog's Hand is really the, the ability you'll probably... I mean, it's the ability I use the most. Like, I probably use it, like, four times more than Berserk. Because the uh, the regen is basically just like like uh, having more HP, and then the the willpower, you know, using it as a as a double stack of willpower is very good as well. It means like you won't just die to to like Grinder or Sigmund or anyone who has like hexy type abilities. Okay. Let's take a look at this guy. This is a ghost who does 33 damage and has kind of no tech. So I think I'm just going to open this up. Generally, I, I save ghost vaults for later, but this guy is not particularly strong. Okay, we got another pile of things. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna whack this dude and let one more thing come close and then... All right, or he'll, he'll die, I guess. <laughs> and then just pull all these guys up. I try to... If I can stand the things that are in the stairs, I really try to work off the first stairs I come to. Um, I don't want to go down a different stairs when I don't have to, and then get, like... And then get ambushed and get into a bad situation. That looks like a shapeshifter. Pretty much whenever... There's certain enemies where intuitively you're going to know they're shapeshifters because it'll be like a butt-naked Spriggan or an ogre. Like, they just have no weapons and they're just kind of standing there awkwardly. That's almost always a shapeshifter. Which means basically just tab a little slower in case they turn into something nasty. Okay. Things are range attacks if you can. If it only takes like a couple steps to break line of sight, always do so. Blinking, very valuable. Especially guys like this because they often show up in packs. See? There's a centaur warrior. These are very, very dangerous. Let's pull back. The hell is that? Shrek? Oh, it's April Fools. Gotcha. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Today was April first. Forgot about that. Um, this might actually be a. I'm actually going to use Potion of Attraction here. It's not a. It's something that is like I throw on the floor once my inventory gets full. So I'll take value from it wherever I can. I don't want to moving back. There's no cover, and I don't want to move forward. So let's quaff attract here. There's another range guy I don't mind being close. Pretty much if you're if you're worse at range than something else, 
uh, attract is good <laughs> or it, it can be good. You know, don't, don't own yourself. <clears throat> Definitely. Um, it's a little safer if you have cancellation potions so you can like get rid of it if you need to. Go northwest. Be careful of these guys. Um, well, these guys aren't bad, actually. The, I mean, definitely be careful of them if you don't have a uh, resist elect. But I was thinking of there's another bird man who's got like, I think it's the reavers that are very very dangerous. Buckler of Protection? That's not bad, actually. Let me take a look at this. I often wear Buckler of Protection over Kite Shield. I'm going to get to a safe spot and, and just analyze what the difference is in AC and Shield. Because I do value AC more than Shield. So my, my defenses, looking up here, are 27, 9, 13. Um, so I can gain... 3 AC and 1 EV for 4 shield. Basically the same amount of stat points, but they go into AC and EV instead of shield. And bucklers, uh, even with my training, will slightly reduce like uh, the penalty of, of, of swinging my weapon. So I'm going to go with the, the buckler of protection. Negative one block. Yeah, I mean, it takes away four shield, but it adds three AC and an EV. That's pretty good. Yeah. The thing about it is that, like, AC... The, the AC and EV are, like, usually more relevant because a lot of things check those things and the things that don't check uh ac generally also don't check shields whereas like there are a lot there are things that that i can't block but do check ac ac is just generally better mm -hmm. yeah no that is that is good to note <clears throat> but i think the Like, I like shield. Like, having shields is very good, especially um, for new players. You want more... I think you want to have a little more defense as opposed to just, you know, wielding a two-handed weapon. But I think AC is, is much more relevant. Especially, I'm going to be going into... I think I got Shoals and... Uh, yeah, I got Shoals and Snake. Snake might have... I mean, Snake... I'm likely to get a better shield than Snake anyway. But, like, I don't even think, like... Like some of the most dangerous things in shoals don't check don't check shields. Oops, wrong way. Actually, so th this vault, like I recognize this vault. It always has like a giant in the middle and like two birds with range weapons uh, on the sides. Let's just pull pull this guy out. Yeah, and the more you play, the more you'll you'll start to recognize certain vaults that you get a lot. There is a slight spoileriness to it, but that's just that's just what it is. All right, so we're done with dungeon. Let's hit Control O and see what we've missed. And usually, I just work down from my annotations, um, both my own and the ones that the game makes. So on D seven, there's a ghost vault. Let's go back to that. And this is where you'll like, like if you if you excluded like a unique or or some dangerous enemy that was at a depth at the time, you'll go back and get them and see if they were guarding anything. Okay, I'm just gonna look at this guy just to double check. Looks like not much else. Lair 5, Exclusion, 3 Doors. That's probably Slime. 
Uh, I'm going to look at my shopping list. Nothing really. I'm not going to buy this Ambrosia or Brilliance. And you can see, like, right, if, if you hit uh, exclamation point, it toggles, like, whichever one is highlighted. If you hit exclamation point, it'll toggle between traveling, examining them, or deleting items. So I'm just deleting them. Uh, Revelation. Yeah, let's buy that. I only have one. I generally, I'll leave stuff on the list if I have, like, a couple of them. Like, if I have four scrolls of Revelation, I don't want to buy another one because maybe I... Maybe on the next floor I go to, I find a shop where I want to buy something, and I don't now I don't have enough gold, or, or you find a bazaar where you need gold. So, I leave things on the list if I don't need them immediately. But um, scrolls of revelation, you could get shafted three floors and wanna and wanna map two on your way up. So let's buy that. And um, shoals and snake, G my general order for S branches. I go to snake first. It's like snake, sh snake, and then probably swamp or shoals, and then spider last. But it, it depends on the character. It can change based on character and what resists you have. Snake, basically, you, you want resist poison. If I don't have resist poison, I'd probably consider going to shoals first. Let's see. Oh, I'm still doing shields. I'm going to turn that off for now, considering I'm wearing a buckler. And um, I'm probably going to build up throwing a bit. Let me bring this up four levels and then see where we're at. I've got 15 boomerangs, 15 javelins, and I'm going to get more in, in shoal. So we are definitely going to be throwing. That's, I mean, the vast majority of the time on a berserker, you're going to be using throwing as your kind of to supplement uh, melee. Think about um, Snake. The reason I think it's the easiest S branch is because a lot of the enemies are slow. Like the the snakes, like the literal snakes, are fast, but are not that big of a deal. the The ones you want to be careful of are anacondas because they're very grabby, so they can ruin you trying to stair dance. But other than that, like the other the other snakes, if they don't haste themselves, are uh, are slow, so you can always walk away. Probably the most dangerous common enemy is um, is the Naga guardians uh, because they encircle you. Yeah, these guys you want to be careful. If you're trying to stair dance, you need to target these guys first. They're really constricty. Like they love constricting. Shock serpents also be careful of if you don't have um, if you don't have resist elect you can take a lot of damage very quick you see they're fast electric bolt does a lot of damage their bite does a lot of damage you know I would say if you're not if you're not beefy highly consider using a hex wand because they don't have good will so something like polymorph is usually the first thing I look at um. If not polymorph, paralyze, you know, something like that. Because um, they also, on death, you can see I resisted it. When they die, they, they deal a little more damage to you. And it's a very embarrassing death when you die that way. Yeah, when you, well, when you, when you kill them, they deal damage to you. What's up, Paul Henderson? The loot is above average today. I would say. I would say I've got everything except for a, a good broad axe. Yeah, I did a game on the Korean server for the sound effects. It, it was slow, but I, I appreciated the sounds. Okay, Mana Vipers. Just try to... Um, just in general... But also, especially against fast enemies, I always try to back up into a place where only a single thing can can attack me at once. Yeah, it's just like when it's really slow, it's... I mean, I feel like I'm playing through a message in a bottle. So you can see I have resist a lek, and it's still... I, I lost like a third of my life, so you really want to be careful.
Okay. So I'm going to just back up. And this is why Snake is the easiest one is because I'm at a third, like, I'm at two thirds life. And I could just walk away. You really want to avoid, like, how you get into trouble is not backing away because you're like, well, I can beat this guy. Then you start fighting that guy, and another thing appears, and you lose like 10 or 15 HP, and you fight him, and then you lose another 10 or 15 HP, and something else appears. And then before you know it, you're in a bad situation, and you got to use like some consumables to get out of it. Okay, I'm going to buy the Scroll of Fog. We don't have it ID'd yet. Um, put all this stuff on the list. I only have one Scroll of Fear, so I'm going to buy that Scroll of Fear. That's a very useful uh, panic button. I also found another Ring of Slang. I'm going to put that on for Dex and also dropped the Dex Ring. There's just no way I'm wearing a Dex Ring over either of these Rings of Slang. Um, yeah, nothing really here for us that we need. Yeah, that's a lot of, like, experience is, like, I think at first, at first you have no caution and you die. Then you have, start having caution when you get in bad situations. And then as you gain experience, you you start gaining caution before, like, when you're at full life. You just see what the worst thing that could happen is and avoid it. That's kind of the key is like avoiding bad situations before they happen. Like you can see right here, like just backing up instead of fighting. There's another guy coming from this place that I've, you know, half explored. So you can easily get flanked. Yeah, you, you'll, you're going to see that I'm going to be berserking very little, like, uh, from this point on. Like, if I don't berserk the rest of the game, that would not be uncommon. <clears throat> berserking is something I do um, often on, like, D2, D3, D4, and then it gets less and less often as the game progresses. You know, um, I don't think you should be berserking in the end game at all, really. Uh Unless you're in some very safe situation. But you just usually don't have to. But, you know, you don't want to be reducing the amount of options you have uh, in the late game. Yeah, I don't... I would never... I'm not going to say never. I would very rarely berserk against an Orb of Fire. Why? Because because if you get if you get high rolled, you can just die and not have any options to get away. Um, you you're just better off just like quaffing might, or like if you're really scared, quaffing might and haste. That's basically berserk, but you also get to do things like you get to do things other than attack. So if something goes wrong, you can you can blink away. Yeah. I mean, with Trog, if you've got the piety, um, you know, you can summon a friend. Like, there's just so many things you can do. You don't want to limit your options. You don't want to get yourself in an, what I call, like, the unwinnable situation, which is where often involves things that um, limit your options. Like, the unwinnable situation usually involves, like, you know, being silenced, you know, being silenced, netted, paralyzed, um unable to read or drink, like all these things that limit your options are usually, they can get you into, there'll be a turn where you have no, you have 0% chance of living because you have no, nothing you can do and berserking can, can contribute to that. All right, I'm going to control F period, see if I missed anything. 
although with all these shops it's kind of there's like a lot of noise here i'm just going to control f shield actually and see what shields i hit okay nothing exciting yet part of snake's gimmick is that you have a higher uh chance of shields having egos on them okay i'm gonna go up and find a different staircase um, there's a bunch of stuff here. It's all open, and there's an anaconda that's going to grab me. So, I think on average, that is a less than safe staircase. Okay, this is better. Okay, these guys are just very poisony. I'll pull these guys back here. Okay, I got my throwing up. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring throwing up to like twelve. Basically the the numbers like I'm kind of I'm basically just looking at the cost and assessing it, but with throwing like bringing throwing up to twelve will will get boomerangs up to Mindele. And they'll get javelins up to where they're you're throwing them at like one turn. Like uh you know. It it's it's one turn of delay to, to throw a javelin, and then sixteen is Mindele for jabs. Uh, yeah, let's quiver or boomerangs. I'm probably not going to be using poison darts much. But yeah, here I'm going to I'm going to use P to fire at the thing with my quivered weapon, quivered projectile. Especially with slang, uh, boomerangs are quite good. Let's go up. I don't like this. There's a lot of things shooting electricity at me. Let's go down the other staircase. Yeah, if you don't have resist elect, you gotta be careful with these guys. You either need to use wand of flame. I only have two shots, but um, if you do have wand of flame, that's pretty much a hard counter to them it'll cook them up in steam or you can poly you know use whatever wands you have or you can throw at them from you know just in line of sight and if if they start winning just back up out of line of sight and uh and regen You can see there's like somewhat variety of of uh, threats, but resist poison is kind of constant. Probably secondary is electricity, and then the salamanders um, do fire damage. But it's not like you, I mean, you're not going to have a choice. It's not like you can be like, well, I don't have these things yet. I can't go here. There's only so many places you can go. So, you know, a lot of times when I do, I, I say like, 80% of the time when I do snake, I have resist poison. But it's probably like 50% or less that I have like resist fire, resist elect, and, and like everything else. Okay, some kind of vault here. Just gonna, I hit control X just to see what everybody's got going on in there. Oh, wow. It's a potion experience. I just saw that. Potion experience, really very rare. Uh, you can go, you can go a, a several games, like you can go a lot of games and not find a potion of experience. Just extraordinarily rare loot.
Okay. Control F period just to see what we got. Yeah, the potion of experience is the only thing, but I doubt I'm gonna I'm not gonna jump into this. Um the these kind of vaults, these like portal vaults are even more dangerous than the the normal door ones, because with the door ones you can open them and teleport. With these you kinda have to jump in. Alright, control G greater than to go down to the next floor. I'm not gonna control F God just see what Trog dropped so far. Okay. Nothing too exciting. I'm gonna find a different staircase. I don't wanna fight two shock serpents at once. I haven't found Wanda Digging. Wanda Digging is really good for creating corridors if you don't have one. These are the most dangerous enemy here, in my opinion. You really, when you see this guy, the, the Guardian Serpent... Um, this blink allies encircling is what will kill you if you're playing too quickly. Cause like, even though you don't see anything just out of line of sight, there might be a pile of stuff and what he'll just put it right on you. So I'm going to move North East. You really, you just want to make it. So, I mean, at this point it's unlikely he can encircle me with anything, but you really want to put walls around you to prevent. Um, prevent him from, from just completely surrounding you with stuff. You know, as a, as an axe user, you, you're better against being surrounded, but it, it, it doesn't mean you want to, uh, facilitate that for value, quote unquote value. Uh, what's that guy chain? I'm gonna just target him with polymorph. I want to see what he changes into. That seems better. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see, he encircled me, but only one thing in line of sight, at least. I'm just going to keep moving backward toward the stairs since a bunch of stuff came. Yeah, I'm just going to back up, regen. There's just no reason to continue fights against slow things when you're not at full HP. got throwing up to 12 um at this point it's probably between fighting and armor yeah i'll grab like two fighting and then i'll grab some armor you can't go wrong and if you want it to be sloppy if you just want to turn on fighting and armor and kind of let it rock for a while you could do that too it's not it's not going to be the difference between life and death um you know with the skilling as long as you don't train wreck it like train no weapon or train no, you know, training zero of something is usually the way you can make a huge mistake. But for the most part, if you just wanted to like leave on like fighting armor, you know, shields or whatever, like that, that's fine. It really is like a game that um, it's, it's really much more about the tactics than like the, those kind of like granular, 
skilling decisions. Um, yeah, I'm pulling back into here. Okay, so we, we did snake one through three. Snake four, any, um, any S branch, the fourth level is usually considerably harder than the first three. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to go to shoals now and do shoals one through three. And then we'll, we'll decide which S branch ending we want to do next. If you want to just go straight through, like you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying Snake. I want to see Snake 4. You could do that. The safest thing, in my opinion, is usually to do the first three of each S branch. So if you're, if you're someone who's like seeking out that first win and you want to do things as safe as possible, I think that's the way to do it. I don't know. Do I? Oh, I do have Flight. Okay, that's good. I'm going to put on, uh, well... Actually, I'm going to go up and regen, and I'm going to come back down. And then I'm going to put on Flight. Flight is pretty good in shoals for, uh, you know, when you're in water you, and, you, and you're melee attacking, you will stumble around, and it, it essentially just tanks a lot of your, your damage output. So having a source of Flight, especially a ring you can take on and off, is, is pretty good. Shoals is a little more dangerous. Um, things tend to be faster, I mean, especially than Snake. They're going to be either normal speed or really fast. Like, like merfolks travel very fast in water. Stuff that flies, a lot of stuff is just faster than you. And it tends to be a more open level. So as much as you can hug the walls, uh, you know, try to do that. Wand of Flame. I only have two... I don't think there's any lying around, right? Yeah, I only have two shots of Wand of Flame. But Wand of Flame is at its best on this level. Um, if you do get, like... The, there's some merfolks that mesmerize you, which don't let you move away, and F Wand of Flame will break line of sight with them. You can be preemptive with, uh, with Trog's Hand to give yourself the willpower to not get mesmerized in the first place, but that is like a, a proactive approach you have to take. So here we found Jorgren. This is a, a unique work of noting. Um, he's extraordinarily dangerous. Like you can see the numbers on on um, LRD and Iron Shot are, are pretty high. He petrifies, although that shouldn't be an issue. And he just he just hits for a lot, so... This is a guy you want to be careful of. Um, I think the first thing I'm going to do is like go. N I think if I if I go north one tile, the snake will step between us. So my plan is to like go north one. Have the snake be between us so that Jorgren won't fire Iron Shot at me. At least I don't think he will. Then I'm going to read Vulnerability to tank his willpower. And then I'm going to paralyze him. That's my plan. You can see Vulnerability. Um, it basically halves the willpower of you. And it... it, it it has willpower of everything on the screen, basically. <clears throat> so it'll it'll get me to... I can always, like, if I want to be even safer, I can use Trog's Hand somewhere here. Let me move north one to put the snake between us. I'm going to do that. Yeah. 
And then I am going to Trog's Hand just so I don't get petrified. I'm going to read Vulnerability now. Let me just show you the, uh, like, if I target him with par Paralysis, I'll show you the, see how it says Chance to Affect 1%. And now paralysis, chance to affect 28%. Which is like 28%. It's not a great percentage, but it's it's pretty good. It's good enough that a couple shots will, you know, will do it. And now he's paralyzed. Now I'm just going to kill him. But yeah, you want to... Um, he's someone you definitely want to formulate a plan of what your next few moves are going to be before you start doing stuff. Because... Uh, he he's quite dangerous. You know, if there's an item, an evocable called uh, File of Floods, which pretty much solves them as well. It's um, File of Floods is basically like a targeted silence for every, anything that that breathes. Uh, and and uses magic, not natural abilities. So it'll it'll own his spell set. Definitely be careful if you um if you do have flight, like constant flight, be careful about auto explore on shoals because it will it will wander you around the whole level. And uh it'll it'll take you on like sometimes take you on a weird path and you can end up surrounded in the ocean. Okay, I got some Wanda flame shots, that's that's nice. Merfolk Impalers, be careful. These high-level Merfolk, um, you know, they can they can really get busy depending on on what kind of weapons they spawn with. If you did find yourself using a pole arm, though, this is a good place to find a really good, you know, usually by the end you'll find like a demon trident or something. The other thing you want to be careful of in in shoals is if something does have nets and javelins. Uh, don't kill it over deep water or you'll lose it forever. You know, don't risk your life, but if you can, you want to kind of lure them onto shallow water or land. There's a Merfolk Siren. These are worth noting. Um, they have Siren Song, which it's a will check and it'll make stuff, it'll make you unable to to leave their line of sight, which can get you into trouble, so... I'm not going to use Trog's hand here. I'm just going to just keep breaking line of sight, pulling him forward. Yeah, and you can see, like, th this is how you get into trouble is there'll be, like, a siren, and then there'll be other stuff that, uh, you know, something like this, Aquamancer, which it Aquamancers deal astonishing amounts of damage if if you let them. So yeah, I'm going to use uh, Trod's hand here immediately just to stop myself from from getting mesmerized. These guys can also be part of an unwinnable situation. Um, water elementals engulf you, which is basically like silencing you. Like you can see, when I hit A to Berserk Trog's hand, it's all grayed out because I'm engulfed. I also can't read scrolls. So be very careful about them. Um, I am going to just whack him. And here come more of them. I do want to probably back up. Okay, this seems fine. Let's, uh, let's turn on armor. And, uh, this is, like, the easiest way to do it, I think. Like, you can do the formula and find out exactly how much armor you need, but an easy way to do it without getting out the abacus is just mark down your AC. You turn on armor, and when it goes up, you can you can decide whether you want to turn it off. 
<clears throat> I think, I mean, I think it's like, I think AC might even be uh, incremental at this point. So maybe this is moot, but this, this is how I do it. It's just a way, it's really just a way to like make sure I pay attention to that I don't leave my AC on for the rest of the game. Yeah, you can use Beam's AC command. You can add up your your base armor and see exactly how much you want to spend as well. You know, like you can look at Gold Dragon armor, base armor rating of 12. Cloak is 1, is 13. Boots are 14. The gloves I'm not wearing <laughs> is, is 15. And then you can do this command. And you can see, okay... I'll just add up 1.47 times whatever to, to find out my AC. I don't feel like doing this math. Or maybe you're not using a, an info bot. You know, maybe you don't have access to it. So the easy way is just to note your AC. And this is how I did it for a really long time. Some more boomerangs. Yeah, Shoals is just such a huge boon to to your throw game. Be careful of these guys too. These water nymphs. These water nymphs can surprise you because you'll run into some and maybe you just kill them real quick. But when they put the water on you and you're stumbling around and they're hitting you for like 3d17 damage, um, you can get into big trouble quick. So don't underestimate these guys. They can also, the other dangerous thing they can do is they can disappear the stairs with the water. So you could be standing on stairs thinking it's safe and then, and then water nymphs just destroy that. That's part of the reason, like, I think shoals can be very difficult, um for new players because there's so many things that will limit uh, your options. And a lot of the ways that you prevent them from limiting your options are preemptive. Um, not, not, not necessarily something you do after you're already in trouble. You know, like the will checks, you, ha are, you have to kind of preemptively deal with those. It's a lot of stuff that, uh, this guy's got a trident of chaos. Oof. Yeah, let's uh let's try to poly this guy. I don't want to get chaos. Chaos can banish. All right, cool. We changed him into a uh, anaconda, which are famous for not having thumbs, so he can't chaos us. Great orb of eyes. Again, like if you have the willpower, not too bad. But if you don't have willpower, beware. Kraken. You want to be careful of these guys. Like as a, if you have an axe, you're you're a little better off. Um, I'm gonna use javelins just because it. Okay, now I'm just gonna. Well, now I'm in water. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm just gonna quaff enlightenment instead of putting on the flight ring, just so I get the benefit of my slay rings as well. Oh, wait, let me, uh, control F, period, see what, okay. Interesting entrance here. So the reason I'm not backing up is because I'm barbed. I'm just going to stand here until, okay, now I can back up. There can be a temptation when 
when you're in a situation where you want to get out of to move fast, try to not move fast and <laughs> try to slowly move so that if something bad happens, you can react. All right. I am going to go back down and start pulling these guys up. That guy has silver jabs. Very dangerous for you, but also very good once you kill them and take the silver jabs. Like, yeah, be, be very careful of javelineers. These guys, one of the most dangerous guys in shoals. They just deal a lot of damage at range. Um, and you can't block. Like, you can't, like, summon stuff to block. They'll just throw right through them, so... When everything has pole arms, they'll kind of stay one spot away. You kind of have to move away and then forward to pull them up. But just be careful uh, when you do that, that something won't take your place. You see? Like, I move north one. he, The guy who's south of me comes forward. And then I move back down and I pull him up. There's an enchant weapon. Okay, we gained an AC. As you can see, I'm at 34 instead of the 33 I started at. So I'm going to reevaluate. And I have evaluated that I am going to gain more armor. Because, uh, like, my war axe is at Mendeley, so I'm not going to train axes. I'm wearing a buckler, I'm not going to train shields. Um, so, like, I, just looking at this, like, it's basically, like, the things I would train would be, like, throwing, fighting, or armor. And at this point, I don't think I need to train throwing. Like, with boomerangs at Mindalay and the two slay rings, I'm gonna, those are fine. I think I'm gonna just keep going armor. It's, uh, it's, you know, significantly cheaper than fighting, so I'll bring that up another AC. These are basically the evaluations I do, and, and they're a little bit... It, it's a lot easier for, like, a straight melee character to make these evaluations because there's only, like, four four skills you, uh, you really look at. I just want to see what this over here on this island. Let's put on the ring of flight and kind of fly over here. Okay. There's a satyr. These guys do decent damage at range. <clears throat> uh, okay, he feared me. I guess I'll just throw boomerangs at him. a tower shield i think i'm gonna just stick with the uh with the protection kite for now all right so we did shoals i think now i'm gonna go um i think i'm gonna finish up snake and then we'll come back we'll do shoals four and then we'll see where we're at Ring of Corrosion. I think I have that incidentally from my hat, right? Yeah. Ooh, a lot of things here. 
Yeah, the 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 last floor is generally a lot more creature dense. Although this looks like it, it might even be the ending. I'm not I'm not positive, but that looks like it might be the uh, the snake ending over there. Let's go up. Hmm. Let's try a different staircase. Okay, this looks a lot safer. So I do want to, um, like, kind of work toward the other staircases is generally what I do. Like, when you have two dangerous staircases and then you found one that was kind of safe, is to try to work toward the other ones to kind of unlock them so you can keep, you know, uh, stair dancing. You don't want to, like, like, come down the third staircase and then kind of wander off. And then if you if you attract dangerous things to that staircase, now you got three dangerous staircases. So I usually will like move toward here and and keep kind of picking away at at the guys that are there. Okay, we're making progress here. Let's see. Let's get target this guy with the bow first, I guess. Okay, we got so we can come down the staircase at least, although it's still still a lot of a lot of dudes here. This seem this does seem like the end vault. Just I don't know. The the amount of guys that are coming out of here and the the coloration of the bricks. Alright, yeah, let's go up and go back to that other staircase. Yeah, yeah well, that was the end vault. Makes, that explains why there's so many dudes here. Okay, we gained uh, we gained like two more AC, which is good because I could see armor costs the same amount of fighting. So I'm probably gonna probably gonna train fighting. Yeah, 
Let's bring fighting up to 20. Ooh, there's a uh, guardian serpent who can't wait to encircle us. Uh, yeah, I'm going to back up. All right. I knew, I knew that was a possibility. I think we're okay, but we'll see. We'll see how these tabs develop. It seems like we're fine. Okay, useless books. All right. That is snake four. Not too bad. Kind of unlucky that we didn't get any shields. Um, yeah. Usually, like, uh, you'll get, like, a bunch of, like, different ego shields. We just, uh... We just didn't. Alright, let's head to, uh, Shoals. Oh, I still got Fly. Let's put, let's put Slang back on. Okay, what's this guy got? He's got nets. Okay. Ring of Ice. Don't think I'll be needing this. So, uh, if your inventory is full, say I hit Auto Explore. Right? I hit O for Auto Explore. It gives me this prompt. You could not pick up a Ring of Ice right and if you hit if you want to ignore it and you hit yes it'll ignore it but it'll keep bothering you about picking up rings of ice if you hit capital a it'll just always it'll basically take it off your auto pickup okay and this looks like a very common shoals ending which is basically it's like a series of like well actually i don't know maybe it isn't the most common shoals ending, I think, is like a series of huts. I'm not, I'm not sure yet about this one. There's Polyphemus. Um, this is a a Cyclops who who travels around with a a whole bunch of death yaks, and he can throw them at you. <laughs> so we're gonna back up. And, uh, yeah, he's throwing his yaks. We'll kill them separately and then, and then deal with him. By the time you face him, he's usually not too big of a deal. Um, you know, just, just be careful if, if your AC isn't too high, the, the, him throwing the death yak can, can definitely chunk you. Okay. Good stuff here, although it's expensive. Oh, it's three fog scrolls. Okay. Fog. I've got two fog. I'll leave that. Four nets. Yeah, I'll just... I'll buy the net. It's cheap. This guy's got nets. I don't have a form of blink, right? Alright. If you do have an invocable blink... Uh, being trapped in a net is the time to use it. It'll it'll get you out and and not break the net. Cataplebuses, definitely be careful of these guys. These are like a test of your like uh, ability to not keep tabbing when you're in a cloud. Okay, yeah, this is a hut. Basically, a series of huts that are gonna have like one item that is generally of mediocre quality. Best you can hope for is like an invocable usually. Although here's a fancy sword. Is 
a merfolk avatar. These are another one of those guys who like uh It's like a siren basically, but it also summons stuff. So just be careful with them. Use Trog's hand or you know break line of sight. This looks very busy. It looks busy, but half the things haven't noticed me. I think I'm going to go northwest to break line of sight. Maybe some things don't follow. Let's put on a ring of flight. Windrakes are something to be aware of. They will deal good damage to you and also blast you backwards. Sometimes it's a good thing. These guys are kind of innocuous because they just look like a turtle, but they have reach and they hit for 50. They're they're really beefy. They have a lot of AC. Um, I mean, they are slow when they're not in water, but yeah, they, they deal a lot of damage. So I think I'm going to um, summon a buddy here, a brother in arms. Th this is like a non-trivial situation. So yeah, let's get a troll, let's get a berserk troll in here. Uh, yeah. And I want to get next to this guy. Okay. I'm going to shoot Wanda Flame at this water nymph. Basically what it does is, does damage, breaks line of sight. And it's going to make our waste a turn, basically, moving somewhere else. There we go. You can see that the Berserk Troll is just going to melt stuff. Ooh, let's go here. Let's Trog's hand. I did lose some life. Um, I think I just saw him drop a broad axe. Let me turn on axes. Yeah. Yeah, Trog, I think that was Trog. Just give to me a plus six broad axe. I'm going to be using that from now on. I'm going to put that up to nine and uh, be pretty happy about it. A broad axe is just better than a war axe. You generally want to move up the ranking of... Whatever weapon you choose, if it's not an axe, you want to move up the rankings of axe as far as base damage is concerned. So broad axe is where you're you're going to end up uh, when you're playing an axe and, and shield, dude. So, yeah, we can drop this war axe. Enchant it up. Flaming is a fine brand, too. Like, when you're using the, the kind of the beefier weapons, uh, whatever it is, Evening Star, Broad Axe, you know, two-handed weapon, Flaming and Freezing are both fine brands. They they add 25% uh, to, the, to the damage of anything that's not, like, immune to the, to, you know, that element. And, you know, percentage is good when it's a... Uh, a bigger base base damage item. All right, so let's bring a uh, broad axe to Mindalay, and the easy way to do that is to hit uh, I for inventory, A for the broad axe, and then S, and it'll automatically set your skill to Mindalay. Okay, this guy's got... This is someone to take note of. He's got a, a distortion weapon and silver jabs. He probably won't come close. He'll probably just throw javelins at me, but 
Uh, I don't trust him. So I'm going to target him with Poly, look at the options. Hydra, Goliath Frog, Dire Elephant, these are all fine options. Ooh, Ilsui. This is a unique that's uh, like medium dangerous. You can see she has like a menagerie of, of stuff like... Um, if you don't see Invis, I guess that's like she's much more dangerous because she can be Invis, summon a bunch of stuff, and it's kind of hard to kill her. Uh, you know, a lot of times you you might just avoid her if you found her too early or couldn't deal with her. Uh, I think I have seen. Oh no, I don't have seen Invis. Yeah, I haven't found seen Invis. Huh. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna Trog's hand, and I'm gonna just try killing her. Okay, she backed up. I'm going to back up. I don't want her in line of sight unless I can attack. Yeah, I think I can kill her even with her being in biz. But we'll see. We'll take it slow. If I got to teleport, I'll teleport. Yeah, we got her. She's not like the most sturdy enemy. You just want to... You want to be careful if you can get adjacent to her or if there's like other things on the screen that complicate stuff. But yeah, a lot of this game is just controlling line of sight, line of fire, pulling things back to like, you know, places you explored, staying out of trouble. It's really when you get to a point where you start kind of um, getting lazy that you get into trouble. Ooh, Lightning Rod. It's a fine thing. Uh, I'm going to drop Poison Darts at this point. I think we're beyond using those. And yeah, probably once I get my axes up to Mindalay, I'll train a little bit more at Evo. Because it's fairly cheap. It costs like a third of fighting. And uh, I've got Lightning Rod. i got Spiders. It'll probably be, like, a little bit of that, and then I'll bring, like, throwing to uh, to 16 to have Mindalay on jabs. And then the rest of the game is just going to be fighting armor and a little bit of dodging when it's, when it's very cheap. Oh, wow. I found shields. Uh, manual shields. I can always go to a tower shield at some point as well. I haven't found an exciting one, but... With a uh, a manual, be pretty easy to get there. Okay, so at this point, we're done with S branches. Um, generally, the safest spot to go from here is vaults. <clears throat> it's usually either vaults or elf. I would feel fine going to elf as well, but you do need to be careful about elf. You can get into a um, You can, because elves are so squishy, you can feel like you're steamrolling it, and then all of a sudden you're just dead. <laughs> because they, there's things that just do a lot of damage, or they send you to Abyss. So, with, with Trog, you don't have to go to Abyss, but if you miss using Trog's hand at some point, you can get, you can get sniped into Abyss. But let's go to Vaults. <clears throat> 